question 30 so from question 30 to 35 you can say it covers your section d of your afm syllabus which is corporate reconstructions and reorganizations all right and the type of reconstruction right we are going to discuss here is mbo management buyout we study that there are four types of reconstructions management buyout sell-off divestment and demerger so one of it is management buyout mbo we are going to discuss this here how to calculate we are doing working on the calculation as well as the theory part right before we read the case study it is a good habit always to start with the requirements so that when you read the case study you know what you are exactly looking for so i will start with the requirement there are four requirements a b c d right a briefly discuss the possible benefits of direct companies part division being divested through a management buyout so there are two divisions in this company in direct companies one is part division the other one is fridge division so they are going to sell off the fridge division right and they are going to retain the part division only so you need to discuss the benefit of it to the company of doing this and this is through a management buyout so possible benefits of management buyout and it's for four marks and this is a theory part so here we don't have any calculation part b provide an estimate of the return the liability holders and the shareholders would receive in the event that direct company is closed and all its assets sold you know that when a company is in liquidation right when is when a company is about to close down we have to pay off our liability holders our debtors sorry our debt holders and shareholders right there is a hierarchy of stakeholders of whom we have to pay first so liability holders comes first right after you pay the liability holders if anything is remaining you pay it to the shareholders or sometimes the shareholders doesn't get any they don't receive anything so we'll see what happens in this case and it is only for three marks right and here you have to do calculation and this is you have to calculate uh, how much the liability holders and shareholders will get when all its assets are sold there are two scenarios one you are selling all the assets the other one is just you are selling the fridge division part division you are retaining right part c so part c is talking about the second scenario where you are only selling of the fridge division because fridge division is a losing it's a loss making division okay so estimate the amount of additional finance needed and the value of the new company so you have to calculate so many things here in a requirement there are sub requirements it's just not one requirement but it's made of many requirements in one requirement that is in c first you have to estimate what is the additional finance needed then you have to calculate what is the value of the new company what which, what is new company you are only going to invest in part division and you are going to do this through management buyout so it's a new company now currently we have a company where we are having two divisions fridge and part division but after we sell off fridge division we are only going to keep the part division we are going to invest in a new company and only part division will be there and this will be done through management buyout so that's why they are saying find the value of the new company because i have read this case study so i can tell you right but when you read the requirements for the first time in the exam you will not be able to understand the scenario but it's still okay just read the requirements you might not be able to understand fully because you haven't read the case study but still have a habit of reading the requirements first and then going to the case study because then you know what you are looking for you will be more aware when you are reading also that i have to find this benefits i have to find the value of the new company how what what are the figures i need you know so you will question all these things will come in your mind when you are reading so this is the advantage of starting with the requirements not only in this paper in any paper in acca now if all the assets of the fridge division are sold and the part division is divested through a management buyout okay briefly discuss whether or not the management buyout would be beneficial now this is the third requirement discuss whether this is beneficial or not 
marks and all these are coming for 10 marks remember 10 marks is a great number of marks you should know how the marks are divided right i have a, a marking scheme too we'll go through the marking scheme also to know how the marks are divided because it's equally important for you to know how the marks are divided then only you will be able to know how much time you need for each parts okay now let's come to part d the theory part okay okay so doric company directors are of the opinion that they could receive a better price if the fridge division is sold as a going concern instead of its assets sold separately what are we doing in the case study is we are selling the assets of the fridge company separately but here they are saying it is better to sell that division as a going concern that fridge division so they have been told that they need to consider two aspects when selling a company or a part of a company what are those two aspects one is seeking potential buyers and negotiating the sale price okay of course when you have to sell a company or a part of a company you need to see who is the buyer and all how much they are willing to pay you right you have to negotiate a sale price and also you have to see who is the buyer and then the due diligence it's not enough just to have a buyer you need to carry a due diligence on those right so discuss the issues that should be taken into consideration with each aspect that means you're talking from due diligence and also seeking potential buyers and negotiating sale price right this type of question if you see you must have never read in your textbook also when you read your textbook also if you try to find the answer from there you will not get this answers there why because i told you every year some question you will get which is new 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 it is never there in the past paper at least one you will get it is confirmed and that is the question where most of the candidates might be struggling because the reason is they have never come across the past paper they have never come across this in the textbook so how will they know that is the time you need to think out of the box you need to think the thinking ability you have to apply there because other things what happens is you know such certain things you know how to calculate we know the theories we have learned the models we know how to calculate additional finance and what to do and all those you will be able to manage but this type of questions part d i'm talking about part d right if you go textbook also you will not get the points so that's why it's very important that you attempt to the revision kit and from the revision kit itself the answers which they have provided from there you learn the points okay so now let's go to the case study okay and mind you one thing this is from my experience i'm telling right when you see in your textbook this is the smallest syllabus out of all right there are five parts in afm out of the five parts this part reconstructions and reorganization is the smallest only two chapters and is very small it's not so much it's not lengthy like risk management or investment appraisal and all those this is the smallest chapter yet this is the hardest one this i'm talking right i have talked with many candidates many students who give reconstruction and reorganizations and also my experience because i also got a question on reconstruction and reorganizations this is one of the toughest one i would not say tough but it's more tricky questions might be asked in a very tricky way you are not asked very straightforward questions they will twist you know they can ask this questions from many different angle that's what makes this question very challenging i would say not like your risk management you know okay using forward we have to hedge this using options not like your investment appraisal okay we know we have to make cash flow and find net present value and we know accept or reject project this is not like that this is a question which can be asked from any angle any side it can be twisted and turned and you know and also since when you practice also you don't practice so much on this part it is neglected okay and it is ignored also most of the time thinking that it might not come for the exam so please don't do that it is my humble request and don't do this don't do this blunders there you need to learn each and every section of afm okay so that's why when i am going to go through this question slowly not like my other questions okay so i am going to go slowly through this because there are confusing areas in this question some when you read your answers also you might not be able to understand some uh, numbers how they calculated because they didn't show you the breakup they just gave you the answer 
final answer they did show you how they calculated and got which i'm going to show you in this video so that's why it's very important that you watch this video till the end right so let's proceed joey company has two manufacturing divisions part and fridge so one is part one is fridge okay one two this is how you have to underline even in your uh, exam also when you're going to do this learn this habit build up this habit keep practicing when you practice also at home you should know what are the key points where i have to underline right how i have to note these are very important skills which you need because every time when you read uh, attempt like your answer questions right your requirements you and you you cannot each time turn back and see you know you cannot go to the text you have to find what is the important number it will waste a lot of time so don't do that underline the important one you can even take your highlighter highlight it wherever you feel is important right so here nicely i have done two division part and fridge now although the part division is profitable fridge division is not and as a result the share price has declined to 50 cents per share from a high of 2.83 dollar per share around 3 years ago so you see because it's a loss making its share price is falling down this is very important how much it has fallen down share price has declined to declined to 50 cents per share why i'm emphasizing on this line is most of you might think it has declined by there's a difference this is why you have to be very critical of each word in the sentence because when you don't you can misinterpret and you need this part when you calculate your shares later okay so declined it is not declined by it is declined to that means currently your share price is 50 cents per share that's why i have told highlight it underline do whatever it is but when you read when you go through the requirements uh, case study again answering requirement you have to be able to spot the important keywords okay so assume it is now 1st of jan 2003 date is very important date is very very important in fm you cannot leave it aside now the board of directors is considering two proposal please read the two proposals very carefully what are the two proposal first cease trading and close down the company entirely so entirely you are selling of the company that is number 1 cease company entirely you see i don't even have to read the full sentence the second time i know i know the keywords are cease company entirely so i know next second proposal right to close the fridge division right fridge division is a loss division so to close fridge and continue the part division through a leverage management buyout make sure that you know what is a management buyout i have made a video also on management buyout please go through that video if you haven't seen that video you don't know what is management buyout it's very important that first you know the keywords before you attempt this question you should know what is management buyout so the new company will continue with manufacturing parts only so the new company after they sell their fridge company they are going to invest in a new company and that new company will only manufacture parts no fridge okay but for a new company what they have to do is but will make an additional investment of 50 million in order to grow the parts division after tax cash flows by 3.5% in perpetuity it's very important you need all this right you have to invest this much to grow the part division after tax cash flows by 3.5% so this is after tax cash flows by 3.5% okay now the proceeds from the sale of course when you sell the fridge division you are going to get something you are going to receive cash proceed now what they are saying is the proceed from the sale of the fridge division will be used to pay the outstanding liabilities okay so whatever the outstanding liabilities you currently have how are you going to pay them the proceed which you get from selling your fridge division okay so proceed fridge division pay liabilities okay now 
the finance required from the management buyout sorry the finance raised you see one word i read it incorrectly it changed the whole meaning i first i read finance required from management buyout right so this is what don't do the mistake okay the finance raised from management buyout will pay for any remaining liabilities so if you have any remaining liabilities it will be paid how from the finance raised from management buyout pay remaining liabilities and the funds required for the additional investment okay so the funds from the uh, funds which are raised from management buyout they are going to pay for the remaining liabilities they are also going to pay for the additional investment that 50 million right funds required for the additional investment that 50 million also they can pay it off from the fund raised from mbo and to purchase the current equity shares at a premium of 20 percent okay this is very important current equity shares at a premium of 20 percent you're going to purchase now this is the trick okay i'm not going to tell you this now when we go through the answer i will show you okay so the fridge division is twice the size of the part division in terms of its assets attributed to it so fridge division is twice the size of part okay now financial statement is given right so this you need your liabilities and also if you see here you have been given the part division profit and free division the sales revenue of both the division you have been given the cost before depreciation interest payment and tax of both division you have been given the depreciation tax and interest you have been given the loss and also if the entire company's assets are sold the estimated realizable values of assets sold are this is very important this is when entire company's assets are sold so this is the realizable value you need this and the following ad additional information has been provided so redundancy and other costs will be approximately 54 million if the whole company is closed so 54 million is the redundancy cost if whole company is closed and pro rata for individual divisions that are closed so it is 54 million if you are selling the whole company but if you are only selling the division uh, fridge division this 54 will be pro rata right based on the size of the profit and the uh, sorry a part and the fridge so this cost have a priority for payment please read this very important very important this cost have priority for payment before any other liabilities in the case of closure so if you are going to close first you have to pay the redundancy payment first you have to pay the redundancy payment 54 million has to be paid first before you even pay your liabilities and taxation effect relating this may be ignored okay so cost which cost redundancy cost they have priority now corporation tax on profit is 20 percent so tax is 20 percent and it can be assumed that tax is payable in the year incurred again it's a very good thing that tax is paid in the same year that means no confusion and no it will be simple now annual depreciation on non current assets is 10% and this is the amount of investment needed to maintain the current level of activity so the new company's cost of capital is expected to be 11% you are given then cost of capital is 11% right so now we have read the case study now you have now again reread your requirements now you will have a better understanding when you read the requirements you will understand what you have been asked to do so first is you have to tell the benefit of management buyout second you have to uh, see how much liability holders and shareholders will get if you are selling off the entire company okay and third that is part c Additional finance, value of new company, and management buyout benefit. 
only fresh division has sold and part d is a theory part where we have to talk about due diligence and seeking potential buyers so now let's see how what are the benefits of management buyout okay before i show you the marking scheme it is here I, right before we go through this i'm going to show you through the answer and lastly after we complete all the requirements we'll take you through the marking scheme okay so here's it's for four marks so four benefits one mark per point so these are some benefits you can see there are a number of possible division uh, benefits for disposing of a division through an mbo this includes fastest way of raising funds compared to other divestment methods what are the other divestment methods sell off demerge divestment so compared to all those methods this is the fastest way of raising funds right this it's a it's since it's a textbook knowledge you can even see from your textbook you will get the benefits of mbo okay it is likely that there would be less resistance from the manager and employees which would make a smoother process right to understand the second benefit less resistance from manager you need to understand what is mbo so go through that and see what is mbo i'm not going to tell you in this video i have already explained this what is mbo what is management buy in make sure that you know mbi also when you study mbo and it may also offer a better price to a selling company as the current management has knowledge of the division okay and is able to make it successful cost associated with an mbo may be less than other methods so all these are four advantages faster way of raising funds less resistance from manager better price and cost will be less part b if the entire company is this what is the how much liabilities and shareholders will get right to to know that first we have to know how much we are receiving from selling off that is very important so if you see first they have started sale of assets so we have to take the when you are selling the entire so add your current assets and non current assets 100 plus 110 because when you are selling off your entire this thing this are the realizable value of assets so it will be 210 that's why it is 210 here sale of all assets right i'm going to put a tick mark for the points which we covered now from here you have to deduct your redundancy cost remember 54 if all if the entire company is sold so redundancy cost also i'm going to deduct because before you pay other liabilities they have clearly told you priority has to be given to the redundancy cost so you are left with only 156 this is your net profit from sale of all the assets out of this what is your total liability this 280 look at your balance sheet you will get this from your balance sheet 280 so your liability is more but your net profit is less that means what is your shareholders can you pay your shareholders after you pay all your uh, liability holders you cannot pay you are not left with anything because 156 is less than 2880 therefore shareholders will not receive anything but liability holders will receive how much only 156 because total liability is 280 out of that only 156 they are receiving so only 156 they can Pay to the liabilities. So how much they are receiving? Liability holders will receive 0.56 per one dollar. That is 156 divided by 280. 0.56. Okay. Now let's go to part C. This is the major part, which needs a lot of explanation. A lot of my explanation is needed in this part. The rest too you can cover even part D also somewhere you can do it. But this you need to see this video. part c so if fresh division is sold now what was the total here just go to part b it is 210 out of that 210 fresh division is two third have the mention anywhere in the case study that fridge is two third and part division is one third or like that they haven't told so how you got this two third okay i told you i will not tell you that time the trick is here but they have written one sentence they told that fresh division is twice the size of part twice the size of part means fresh division is 2 part division is 1 because double of 1 is 2 right because they told twice the size of part so let's take part as 1 twice of that is 2 which is fresh division so total if you take it is 3 so that's why fresh division will be 2 over 3 part division will be 1 over 3 you see clear cut they will never tell you this is how you have to get 2/3 okay 
which is 140 right next redundancy here also redundancy it will be two third only because finished division and for redundancy total was 54 only two third of 54 this time you will be deducting which is 36 so you are getting 104 but your liability is 280 same only right now you have got what you wanted to calculate net proceed from the sale of all the assets that you have calculated now you have to know what is the total funds required right first they told you what is the total funds required this you need to know okay So this is the number one which you need to calculate because without this you cannot calculate the second one. Then you have to calculate total funds required. Then you have to calculate a value of the new company before buyout. Right? This you need to calculate. So for calculating total funds, let's go up and see. Amount of the MBA funds needed to pay the current and the non-current liabilities. So both current and non-current liabilities, if you see the balance sheet, it is 280 only. Right? Out of that 280 only, 104 you are receiving. So how much the difference? How much fund is needed? Extra, how much you need to pay? It's 176. The difference, 280 minus 104. Okay. Next amount of mbo okay listen carefully you you will not be able to calculate this directly you will not get this this is why i told you that you need to watch the videos they don't give full explanation they just give you the total figure 60 how you got 60 it has a lot of workings to do here and if you're smart enough you will catch it you will get it because i myself took a long time to understand this thing right so i can understand how you people are struggling for it okay never mind that's why i'm here to help you out so amount of mbo funds needed to pay shareholders how much you have to pay the shareholders this is okay you have to pay your liabilities current liabilities 176 right remaining liabilities because they told the remaining uh, your liabilities will be paid from your mbo funds and your shareholders and also investment needed for new venture okay so investment needed for new ventures 50 clearly they have told 50 million but that's 60 how are you getting 60 for the shareholders okay i will do the working here only just go to your balance sheet okay uh, okay before this read this line they told that uh, okay and to purchase the current equity shares at a premium of 20% current equity shares okay so remember that now go to your balance sheet you have been given 0.45 per share per value it is 40 so you have to find the number of shares first how are you going to find the number of shares which will be here itself i will do okay 40 divided by 0 0.4 this i'm sure you must be able to calculate it which is 100 okay which is 100 so this is the number of shares now what is the current equity price you have it has been declined to 50 cents per share what is the total number of share 100 so the amount value will be 50 cents so this 100 into 50 cents it will be how much 50 okay this 50 they told at a premium of 20 percent they are going to purchase equity shares at a premium of 20 percent so 50 into 1.2 which is equal to 60 you see so that's why this is 60 this much you need to pay for your equity shareholders because you are going to purchase so 60 and that is when you add all for your current liabilities for your uh, shareholders and for your new venture investment it is 286 so that is the investment which you need for the new venture 286 total funds required 
right now we are going to calculate what is the value of the new company before buyout following buyout sorry following buyout after the buyout of course after the buyout only there will be a new company right so sales revenue and we have that taken the cost okay let's see how sales revenue is 170 and cost is 120 okay so for that just go to your statement of profit or loss sales revenue part division 170 okay cost you just have to take this cost part division cost not fridge division because there will be no fridge division okay so here when you go here i have taken 170 i have taken 120 and profit before depreciation is 50 only and now depreciation now comes the point this you need to calculate depreciation so how you are taking depreciation is right how you are taking depreciation okay okay so why is it one third into 100 plus 15 to 10 percent okay and they have put a star so they have some assumptions before going to this assumptions we'll show you how they have calculated depreciation okay 10% they have taken because here they have told that depreciation is 10%. Where is it? Depreciation is 10%. Clearly they have told. So 10% we know how it is. And it is one third because part division is one third. Right? Part. For each is to that. But part is one third only. And why 100? Because see your non-current assets. This. Don't go and take. Okay. Most of you might do this mistake. That you go and take depreciation on this 110 which is there in your. What? financial project balance sheet don't forget that balance sheet has both the part uh, share uh, sorry part and fridge you are doing for a new investment for a new company so new company has this right you have to take for this for the new company 100 So, on this 100, you are taking one third because part is only having one third of out of this 100. Right? Because when you are selling this entirely, out of this only, only for each division you are selling. So, one third is retained by the part. So, one third of 100 will be there. Right? And it will be for 10% because uh, uh, they have told that the position of non-current asset is 10% and they are adding 50. That 50 which they are adding is this 50. The additional investment they are adding. Right here. Yes, this 50. This 50 they are adding. Additional investment. Right? So here, that's why they have taken... If you see depreciation one third into hundred because one third is for the parts out of total non current asset plus fifty and then into ten percent which is eight point three and then taxes corporation tax is twenty percent so you take twenty percent deduct and you are getting cash flow before interest payment before interest payment now now let's see what is the assumption for the depreciation okay. It has been assumed that depreciation is available on the re revalued non-current assets plus the new investment. So revalued non-current assets and new investment. New investment is 50, revalued non-current asset is 100, like one third of 100. So they are saying it is assumed that depreciation is taken on this. And it is also assumed that no further investment in non-current assets or working capital is needed. Okay. So whenever you do such calculations for depreciation, especially for depreciation, always try to give your assumptions it's always good on the you're on the safe side in fact you are getting marks if you state your assumptions right so wherever you can state your assumptions clearly so that if so that you are not being penalized twice right let's see your assumption even if it's wrong so for that wrong assumption you are not getting mark but based on that if you're calculating anything for your calculation part they will not cut your marks Right, you are being you are being only penalized once. So let's see that your assumption was right and your numbers are wrong. Still, you will get some marks because your assumption was right, even though your numbers maybe your calculation was not wrong. Okay, now 
this is not it this 33 33.4 is not the value of the company new company now you are going to use it this 33.4 okay so estimated value based on cash flow in perpetuity you have to use this they have given in the cash flow right profit after tax so they are using this method to value there are three ways of valuing a company if you know one is your asset based method can we use it here no we can't the other one is market based can we use it here income based no we cannot use we can only use cash flow because we are working in cash we are working with cash flows we have been given uh, the cash flows in perpetuity also so we can only work with the third method that's why we are going to estimate our value based on this cash flows in perpetuity so this 33.4 right this 33.4 you are taking from here this one put it multiply by 1.035 because 3.5 percent in perpetuity and 11 percent because your cost of capital of new company is 11 percent right don't know why my pen is not working okay okay so it's 11 percent because cost of capital for the new company is 11 percent and minus your perpetuity so once you take it this is your value this 461 million dollar this is how you need to write your value it has to be in your currency and also you need to write it whether it's in million or thousands or what it is in millions right just don't write 461 right million because you are dealing in million just see this is very important that you write millions right because you don't write, want to keep writing zeros all the time so for you not to make mistakes not to waste time writing zeros you are just writing hundreds right which means 140 million 36 million like that so when you're writing a final answer you need to write in millions and also in your currency dollar right just see here once again if you forgot the numbers so cost of capital is 11 percent that's why 11 percent minus and there is a 3.5 percent growth right see path divisions after tax cash flows by add uh, by 3.5 percent in perpetuity that's why it is you're deducting cost of capital by 3.5 percent okay now when you see this 461 right this is about 61 percent over and above the you also need to talk about benefit remember you need to talk about the benefit of this to the company whether it's beneficial or not this mbo so this is about 61% over and above the fund invested in the new venture and therefore the MBO is likely to be beneficial. How you are calculating this 61%? Hmm? It's always better to calculate some ratios. Wherever you can, please calculate ratios. Right? And when numbers are given, it's very easy to calculate. Of course, you can calculate some ratios, right? So always try to get this ratio rather than saying that the book value, uh, sorry, value of the com new company is this much, fund required is this much. Rather than giving so many figures, try to bring, do some ratios and just give one answer like this, 61% and above. It's easy to read, right? S saves time because you don't have to write so much. So how you are getting, right? I'm giving you one minute to calculate this 61 percent right hint is you don't have to go through a requirement you just need this you can just go through this and see from your calculation okay so i think one minute is over so that 61 percent you are getting just see how much the total fund you require 
286. And what is your uh, value? 461. So this 12 unit, 286 divided by 461. So if you get it, you are getting some 62% something, right? So that's why they're saying this is about 61% over and above the fund invested in the new venture. And therefore, the MBA is likely to be beneficial because your value of the new company is more than the fund which you require for the new investment. Therefore, you can say this is beneficial. However, however, see when just don't stop with this is beneficial. This is one key area which I need to discuss. I will be discussing it in some video later. How to answer and all. What are the key points to put? But for now, what I want to say is don't just stop with beneficial. Just don't stop with one sentence, right? Everything has a disadvantage. Always try to bring both advantages and disadvantages. That's how you evaluate. The more you evaluate from both the points, better your marks will be. In a, in a FM, in any question. It could be your risk management, it could be your investment appraisal, it could be your role of senior financial advisor, it could be from any point of view, but you need to discuss both the points. That's how you evaluate. Just they asked whether it's beneficial or not, just don't say it's beneficial or don't say it's not beneficial. Try to bring both points and then give your conclusion. Okay, so here they told, however, use this kind of words, however, but in case. It has been assumed this kind of words you try to use. So, however, this assessment is based on estimates, right? Estimates only. Small change. This, see, here they are. This is what? This is a cash flow model which you are using to value your company. We know there are three models of valuing a company in purchase and acquisitions we learned. So, those models you can even apply in your reconstruction and reorganization also. Same only. The method will be same. Only this time it is selling the company. In more recent accusation, we are buying the company, that's it. But the way of value is same. Method used, same. So advantages and disadvantages which you give for mergers and uh, accusation, same you can give for this also. So basically you're talking about the advantages and disadvantages of what? Cash flow model of valuing the company. Right, because these are based on estimates only. Your growth rate, your cost of capital, so those are the points which you need to talk about. So they are saying small changes in variables, particularly the growth rate. What was the growth rate? 3.5% in perpetuity. So even a small change in this variable will have a large impact on the value, right? Value could fall down drastically. So that time advantage might become disadvantage. The assumption of growth in perpetuity may not be accurate either. Sensitivity analysis should be performed before final decision is made. This is your conclusion, right? Most of you might be thinking, what is my conclusion? How did I conclusion in AFM? This is your conclusion in AFM. It can be for risk management. It could be for investment appraisal. It could be for mergers and accusation. It could be for organizing corporate reconstruction and reorganization. It could be for any question, right? When there are things like this, where you have, where your result is based on so many estimate, so many variables, the most sensible answer, the most safe answer to write is use sensitivity analysis or sensitivity analysis should be conducted in this case to get a better answer. That's it. One line enough. You are getting your marks. You are getting all your marks. Right? Talk about advantage. Talk about disadvantage. Then write the sentence that before a final decision is made, better to carry out sensitivity analysis. And you are done. This is the trick in AFM. You just have to know how to finish your answer. If you know that, no questions will be tough for you. Even whether you know the conclusion, whether you know, don't try to know exact answers. You will never get it. Right? So you need to put this kind of sentences and words. Because it's not, you cannot be 100% certain. You are just advising. You are just recommending. You are not saying that this is right or this is wrong or this should be done or this should not be done. Okay. So if you are clear with that, then you will be clear with the way you write your answer. Once you keep practicing, 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 you know that this is mentioned in everywhere. Sensitivity analysis should be conducted. More information is needed on this, right? So this kind of lines has been repeated. Now let's come to part D. Part D we need to talk about what? 
right read the requirements again so they are saying that is better if the cell as a going concern rather than as a sole separately and two aspect which we need to consider is what negotiation sale price buyers and due diligence we'll see what they have written here maybe you can pick up some of these points and learn so the search for a potential buyer will either involve an open tender or the use of an intermediary right you know that both the ways you can find a buyer it may be that a single bidder is sold or maybe Dorik will look to have an auction of the business among interested parties right so through auction also we can get interested buyers so potential purchasers may be found amongst industry competitors as well isn't it isn't it uh, very likely that we are going to get uh, the purchases of our company from the our competitors right it's very likely that competitors might want to buy our company right or that division it's very likely so potential buyers could be from there also for, from our industry competitors also as well as the company suppliers and distributors exactly it could be competitors it could be suppliers it could be distributed it could be anything don't just limit to one side potential buyers that it could be from only this side okay so a good deal of discretion will be needed to protect the value of the business for sale from adverse competitive action you need to protect your business right what if you are selling your business to someone who is not uh, someone whom you cannot trust right someone who is not ethical so you need to think all this right if this did not happen a dominant competitor in the industry could start a price war which could reduce prices and also the value of their division before prior to them making a bid right now once a potential purchaser is found it will want to conduct its own due diligence to ensure that everything is as expected and as it been told you need to do a due diligence once you get a buyer so access should be given to the potential purchaser for this including up to so you have to give your access to your company to whom to the buyer the one who is going to buy from you why is that because they need to see that you are true to what you are saying why would a company want to buy another company if that company doesn't have any value they want to see whether that company actually does have value or not whether it's worth buying that company or not so you need to give permission to the buyer to come and see right these are the things which they can't you need to give right okay you have to give them up to date accounts any legal documentation uh, documentation relating to assets doric should also perform some due diligence right on the ability of the potential purchaser to complete the transaction right this is more like an audit if you see these answers and all so it is necessary to establish the how it is necessary to establish how it will be able to finance the purchase and the time scale involved in obtaining this finance right so you also need to see whether the buyer who is going to buy from you can they are they in a position to finance can they buy do they have the funds required right and what is the time period time scale in how many weeks or months or years they are going to do that going to buy it and complete the transaction you need to see that on that also you need to do a due diligence so direct companies lawyers will also need to assess assess any possible contractual issues relating to the sale now the lawyer also will take a part here because they want to see whether there are any contractual issues or legal issues relating to the sale and the transfer of employment rights the transfer of intellectual property and any rights and responsibilities that will remain with the doric company who will come and look after this the lawyer the lawyer of the company and finally the last paragraph right a sale price is likely to be negotiated and should be negotiated in a way that will maximize the return to doric right so whenever a sale price you are negotiating what happens how the company let's say you are a company you want to sell your company 
or a part of your company what and you're negotiating a price so when you negotiate a price think like this this is how you come with an answer if you think like this keep yourself in his position in the other company's position and think that you are the one who's selling your company and you are there to negotiate a price how will you do it you will negotiate a price which will maximize your return you will look for your own self-interest right so that's how you negotiate which returns maximize the return to you to the doric company right professionals should be used to conduct the negotiations and they must be fully informed of the situation around the cell we hire professionals to do that there are professionals who are very good in valuing company right their only job is to value the company only they are expert in that field right and for negotiating a price and all also we take their advice we consult them because they, because they are good in that but before that before we hire professionals or give them the job for valuing that and negotiating a price what should we do is we should keep them fully informed of the situation of the cell they need to be they need to be up to date with that and including any conditions and any legal requirements right what are the conditions what are the legal requirements of the cell all this has to be made clear with the professional whom you are going to hire to value okay the consideration for the sale what is the sale price the title deed of the assets and the terms for the transfer of staff and any accrued employment benefits such as pension rights will be subject to agreement all this there will be an agreement right so that's it now as i promised you i'm going to take you through the marking scheme because it's very important that you also know how it is marked first we'll see that management bio discovery in chapter 15 and path c don't forget to apportion the assets to each division in two third and one third right and also don't forget to conclude whether it is beneficial or not in part d don't forget to address both aspects there are a number of issues for both points so you should be able to produce a reasonable answer here what are the both aspects one is they are talking about sale price the buyer and negotiating sale price the other one is due diligence so both aspect needs to be covered okay part a it was for four months benefits of mbo one mark per benefit that means four benefit has to be discussed part b it was for three marks so how this three marks calculation of funds to pay proportion of liabilities and comment please make a comment also calculate comment calculate comment so just calculating and not commenting you will only get two marks for part b now let's go to part c which is for 10 marks so if you see the 10 marks first one is calculation of funds required from mbo then calculation of the new business value of the new business which is four marks right four four marks and finally discussion which is two to three marks you need to discuss right whether it is beneficial and all and the conclusion which you said about sensitivity analysis and all all this are getting marks finally part d seeking buyer and due diligence right you can you when you divide like let's say you have two requirements in one requirement and the mark is eight marks so you can divide equally the same way is just to apportion it equally four four marks then you know that you have to write four points here and four points there so it's easy also for you to come up with points so that's it for this and hope that now you will be in a better position to understand how a reconstruction and reorganization questions appear in your exam right and don't just watch this video and keep it with yourself don't forget to share this video among with your friends also right because there are many people who doesn't know about my channel they don't have time to watch they don't know where the valuable resources are they actually don't have that knowledge so please share them this knowledge share them this video so they also can get benefit of it you also can get benefit of it right it is also always good to help others too right help others also in passing your acc journey and you also pass so that's it and don't forget to subscribe to this channel until then watch till my watch me till my next video thank you and take care